welcome to Mary Elizabeth Jones Variety Hour. Yay! My favorite show. <laughs> it's one of my favorite shows. I have a few favorite shows. Uh, Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rogers. And, oh, I love Mr. <laughs> and then this show. Yes. And then I do other shows. Yes. Like but, and and it, my, my, my favorite shows are the ones I appear on. So yeah, My yeah. name is Kayla Zarr, and I'm her special guest star today. Special guest villain. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, it's a beautiful day here in uh, here at the at the, at the Bird Park. Forest <laughs> Bird Park. At, at Bird National Forest. <laughs> <laughs> this used to be the the bird. Uh, this used to be the uh, uh, the the desert, but they planted a lot of trees here, except for this area. Right. So we don't have any trees. Yeah. But. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> How much longer is this show? Oh, I thought it was almost over. It's, <laughs> it's the longest show I've ever been on. <laughs> or it seems like the longest show I've ever been on. <laughs> if it looks like we're squinting, well, I am. Because I, I have the sun in my eyes because I can't. We're, we're using natural light. Like, right. Like the great uh, cinematographers of yesteryear, like right. James Wong Howe and... Right. And, uh, <laughs> speaking, speaking of squinting, speaking of squinting, with the um, um, on Channel Six News, um, that comes on at twelve o'clock. There was I never baby. watch it. No, no, but I, I'm I'm in bed long before that. Yeah, but this was years ago. <laughs> there was a lady. There was a lady that used to be on there that used to like you know cook recipes and all that. Mm -hmm. Her name was Shirley Simmons. Yeah. And um, my mom, when my mom was living, she used to watch it and. She was like, she looks like she's squinting. Squinting. Yeah, and I was like, she does kind of look like it, doesn't she? She had a, she had, she had something in her eye every day. <laughs> her finger. <laughs> I wonder if there was a cure for that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, she, she had, to, she had to go to a special doctor in, uh, in Copenhagen. <laughs> to well, change, to change everything about her. She actually. In fact, she used to be Shirley Simmons. She yeah. used to she used to be called Seymour Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> they changed too much more than her eyes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It was up. She, was... she actually retired um mm -hmm. years ago. I, yeah. I'm not really sure if that counts as a career. She, but she she retired? Yeah. Yeah, good nice work if you can she get it. She was like in her like seventies <laughs> or eighties or something. Yeah. yeah. And she retired. Yeah, she did some it's really about, good It's about damn time. <laughs> If you think I'm gonna be, if you think I'm gonna be working for right. a living, well, I mean, I might have to. Right, right. Depends on the politics. Yeah. But I, if you think I'm gonna be working in my 70s and 80s, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna wake up every day, probably at 11, 12 noon, then and then have, uh, then go out to lunch right away, <laughs> then back at the office at uh, maybe two o'clock, right. work till 2:30, then go home. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all this, all this, I'm going to retire from digging ditches and <laughs> putting up fences and all the things I've done up to yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but she was, she did some really good recipes back in the day. Like now, what was her, what was her speciality? She used to cook like this, um, she cooked lots of stuff. She, mm -hmm. um, I think she cooked some kind of a, mm -hmm. like a, she used to do like, Thanksgiving stuff, Fourth yeah. of July stuff, Christmas yeah. recipes. And... Christmas recipes. Yes, yeah, hey, yes. Hey. I think Christmas... she cooked something with like cream cheese and all that good stuff. All right, cream cheese. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Uh huh. You know, they the greatest thing uh, Madison Avenue ever did was resell <laughs> sour cream and cream cheese and call it a Greek yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me. I mean, me you could put that on a potato. Yeah. And you wouldn't taste. In fact, it probably tastes better. Right. Me, <laughs> I love cream cheese. Cream cheese, yeah. I also love sour cream too. Sour? You should get sour cream <laughs> cheese. Then you really just just smoosh them together <laughs> with a salad bowl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that, I guess that probably works. You know, but I haven't really tried it like that. But. Yeah, I I try not to. eat. I'm kind of a health nut if you haven't already guessed. Right. And I and I try to stay away from white food. <laughs> Name anything white. I don't. I uh, not to say. And and uh, uh, well, I don't eat ricotta cheese. I don't eat um, 
uh, Swiss, uh, no, Swiss ice. Um, yeah. uh, 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 the sour cream, uh, yogurt, uh, yeah, I'll yeah. eat. That's yeah. about it. And right. I try not to eat potatoes or french fries or yeah. rice. That's right. I, oh, oh, I got a funny story to tell you. I, I once went to, you know, because brown rice is better than uh, white rice. Right. So I went to a, um, a, a restaurant once, and it came with rice. Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, is it white rice or brown rice? He goes, you want brown rice? I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got brown rice. And I'm not kidding you. You know what they did? What? They they put soy sauce on the white rice. I said, here's your brown rice. There you go. Okay. I said, this is not, this is not brown rice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brown rice, I you know. Uh, yeah, now I don't even eat brown rice, rice, but well, that brown rice, I think all rice is brown rice. It's just right. that it's it's homogenized or something, or they peel yeah. it off, peel right. the the rind off, and it's right. and it's yeah. white rice. But white rice is like eating white bread. Right. It's like eating Wonder Bread. Right. A lot of people think rice is good for you, but it's not. And but brown rice is better than white rice. There was a. Uh, what was it called? The macrobiotic diet. Oh. And a famous guy, um, uh, Alexander Knox, he was always on the Jack Parr show. Oh, okay, he okay. he was a humorist. I don't know what he, but he was a drug addict and he was in prison. He did a lot of crazy things. And then he was right. also funny. Yeah. He was funny on the Jack Parr show. And one of the things he said, he, they, uh, Jack Parr said, ha, ha, ha. How did, how did you get off of uh, uh, off of drugs? <laughs> and and he said, um, brown rice. I'm on a new diet, and I have no. And it was basically just eating brown rice and vegetables <laughs> the rest of his life. And I think he lived he lived pretty long. Oh, well, well, <laughs> After that, that's smart. <laughs> yeah, but that yeah. was then. That was back in the 1950s. Right, right. <laughs> and yeah. um, so uh, so so I yeah so I try to steer clear of white food. Yeah. Somebody, I actually saw somewhere, somebody actually said they don't eat white food, and I and I said I I came up with that. I I you know what I called it? What? I called it. I actually invented my own diet. I actually wrote a whole long article about it for a uh, for a local paper, uh-huh. uh, and uh, they only printed half of it. Uh-huh. They printed the an- there was an anecdote and and the diet right, part. They right. took out the diet part and only printed. The anecdote, which was kind of funny, right. but um, but the, it was the Jack Spratt diet. Uh, you know the Jack Spratt. You don't eat any fat. Oh, <laughs> Jack, Jack Spratt diet. Okay. The Jack Spratt diet. I remember that. If I was smart, I would have named it after myself, and and, <laughs> and I'd be at least I'd have about you know thirty five cents today <laughs> <laughs> instead of what I don't have. Right, right, right. Now I understand. This is a uh, a good week for you because you uh, you uh, we've been talking about a show you've been doing yes yes and uh, and uh, and it reached its culmination this yes, week yes so tell us a little bit about and what you did and, and everything we filmed our first scene last night and we completed it first and scene yeah we were we're doing some other scenes um this week. But we did our very, we finished our very first scene that we were working on. First scene. Okay. And, um, yeah. It was a, um, it was a, like a music video kind of thing. Okay. That, that, our first scene was, was. Okay. And, um, um, we were like making this, like, choreographed stuff. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I, you know, I was pretending that I was like walking around to, these group of people saying, no more war, no more oh. war. It was know. a political theater. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it's, the sh- that's what the show is actually based on, sort of. Is it like, it's like those guerrilla theater of the 1960s, like <laughs> <laughs> the hippies. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. And the, and the, could... and the, and the yippies. <laughs> 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 you carry posters uh, p- p- uh, and, uh, and peace signs and everything. Uh, we didn't. Well, <laughs> there was one person that did that. Oh, what, then, well, the but, one person does it. That that's then it. Yeah. Then that then that then that works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't need yeah. everyone doing it. Yeah, it's um the the song that we did was called No More War. No more, and it was an original song. Yes. wasn't wasn't a popular. Yes, yes, yes. That's great. Now, and you were singing it with uh, in the chorus. There was um, a lead singer singing it. Um, the lead singer. Um. We know we both know him. His name was Tayshawn Blanding. Oh, I know Tayshawn. Yeah, he did a song that was his song, so he got to be in it with us. I know us. everybody. Yeah, 
he got to be in it with us, and yeah. he was kind of. Like, oh, he's a great singer. Yeah, he is, and um. Yes. And then you know we were just dancing to his song. Oh. Yeah, we were like acting it out. And all Did he that. write the song, or was it written by a committee, or? He actually wrote the song. He that wrote night. the song. Yeah. It was his song. Okay. And and what type of music did was it a piano backing it or No, it was like a gospel like a gospel inspirational. Oh, okay. It, it was a I think a pre recording, you know. Okay. It's a beautiful song. So. Okay. Oh I can't wait. Now you can actually see this on the internet? Yes. Um we're gonna they're gonna probably put it together around sometime that the, when we get done or around I mean are they up. gonna do they, I mean uh, uh, they're gonna Put all of them together in one, but you, they ta oh, but they taped the first one yes, already, yes, and you yes. were a part of that. Well, yeah, that was yeah. something. That's very yeah. I think exciting. they I think they have some editing to do and all that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, See, I got the idea. I told you this earlier. Mm -hmm. I got the idea that this was going to be in a theater. I mean, with an audience and everything. Yeah. Well, I thought and that... and trouble is with this pandemic. There's yeah. There's no there's no audience members anymore. Yeah. COVID <laughs> sucks. Yeah. I was watching some show. Uh, uh, some talk show. It was the Drew Barrymore show. Oh, okay. I didn't and know Drew and Barrymore. you have an audience, and they and then when you look closely, the audience they're right. all just TV screens oh. with people's faces, ah, housewives uh. and cab drivers and everything. And it was kind of weird looking at because all the heads were in different sizes yeah. in comparison to the screen. <laughs> right, right. I think um, yeah. other shows, other talk shows are like that too. Yeah. Like um, take um. I'm trying to think of that show that I saw recently. I think America's Got Talent is that way. And yeah, a yeah. A lot of shows I was, was yeah. kind of, you know, getting ready to say the that. Game shows, the voice. Because they had the judges, on, they had the judges in person together, mm -hmm. but the, the contestants were like yeah. on the screen. Yeah. And then the judges talked to them from there. Yeah. So. Nick Carter. Right. <laughs> yeah. He's not on it anymore. <laughs> He's on the Mass Singer now. Oh yeah, Nick Cannon. Yeah, and then uh, Mr. Mr. Mariah Carey, mm. and then <laughs> and then uh, yeah. So so uh, so, but now the whole audience is is the is the audience at home. You go watch it. You go watch it at home. Right, right. You yeah. don't have to. You don't have to put your shirt on. You can just. <laughs> <watch>. <laughs> oh, by the way, all those people that you know now that a lot of people aren't going to church. They're watching it on on, uh, on on their video screens and everything. Yeah. Just because you could go, you could watch on a Sunday morning uh, a video of church in your underwear doesn't mean you should. I've been, <laughs> I've been doing church on the phone. So yeah. Church on the phone. yeah. But you wear a nice Sunday best when you go. I hope. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just to yeah. keep just to keep things right. consistent. Exactly. I mean, you know, I'm still at church. But You're still at church. It's a little different, yeah. you know. Yes. So, you know, things get better. You yeah. Know? How, how did they do the collection plate? Um, <laughs> Not they online. Just, <laughs> they, just, um, they just said, you know, you could do it like online because mm -hmm. um, my pastor has an app where you can like donate money. Oh, of course he does. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I, and I charge do, cards and. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I love giving, you know. Yeah. I'm not very good at that. Yeah. But, you know, I'm the guy who puts the nickel in the collection. <laughs> <laughs> I make sure everyone sees me do it too. Make sure. Oh look! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my mom told me told me that there was people like she's from Ireland, yeah. and they would go to church, and and there was there was all these guys that you know didn't have any money for the collection plates. They they set it wouldn't be a plate so much; it would be a basket. Right. And then you'd see all the dollar bills or pound notes or whatever it is, and then shillings. And he would actually just stick his hand in there and just shake it around and pass it over. Uh, actually, um, there's this, um, in my old church, um, where I used to go to Unity. Yeah. And every time, um, sometimes when some people didn't have money, they did they have, they take the plate and they just held their hands up like this. <laughs> They pray they over just, the money. Yeah, and then they and then they just pass it. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've done that a couple of times. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good. I'm gonna do that next time I'm hauled in the church. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they say, "Don't you have yeah. a present for us?" I said, "Yeah, my presence is your present." <laughs> <laughs> my presence is your present. Oh, and then uh. uh <laughs> 
I heard a story once about a famous evangelist. I'm not going to tell you his name, Jerry Falwell. And <laughs> he, somebody told me this. Uh, it was from Lynchburg. This was, I think, before he was famous. Right. But he was getting famous. Mm -hmm. This was back, I guess, in the 70s or so. Mm -hmm. he, he, they actually counted the money. Like, they had a collection right at the beginning yeah, of the service, yeah. okay? And then he gave his preaching and all. And then he got word from the uh, uh, from one of the people who was counting the money right. while he was talking. Right. Not enough money. We need more money. Right. So then there was another collection. And then he preached some more. And then they said, okay. And I'm not kidding you. They actually had guards there. I mean, guys with nice suits. I don't know if they were real guards. I think they were just guys in the right, suits, right, the ushers and stuff. Because right. we're going to lock all the doors. <laughs> and if you don't, and we're going to do a third collection. And if that ain't going to, if that didn't reach, we don't reach our limit here, then then we're just going to, we ain't going to open the door until. <laughs> right, right. And so, um, yeah, remember something about the preachers on television? Yeah. Was that. They're, they're the original infomercials, you know, yeah. and uh, they, uh, they, they don't, you know, a lot of people think that, that they, they, they get free, that, oh, what a wonderful show, the PTL Club or the, you know, <laughs> or the uh, Pat Robertson, or right. and they think right. that, uh, oh, they just get donated that, and I said, no, they pay for that. If they pay for that, it's an infomercial, they pay for it, and then part of the deal is they have to raise money yeah. to, to keep the show going, and right. in fact, the more, and it's kind of weird, they're kind of always, they're not very good with money, obviously, yeah. as it turns out with the scandals they had right, uh, years right. later. What happened was they would, they would raise the money, mm -hmm. and then, and then if they made a lot of money, which was good, they would buy more time. Oh, so then when they got right. even more popular, they bought more time, and right. more time, and right. more time, but yeah. they kept asking, had to ask for more money. It was like never, right. the, I mean, the, the, the bucket never got full. Right, right. I mean. <laughs> Okay. Um, I went to a church one time, actually a couple times, mm -hmm. like twice. Um, so um, I think the pastor's wife or somebody, they just, you know, they stand in front of the, um, they stand actually behind the, you know, the offering, yeah. you know, area, and then they kind of do it like an auction. Yeah. I just think it's like, that's really weird. <laughs> an auction. Like you know how some churches. No, how, how did how how did that play out like an auction? How, tell well, me what it was like. you know, personally, I thought it was weird <laughs> because this is not an auction. This is the house of God. Yes. You know, I we mean, threw the money lenders out of the temple, Jesus. Yeah, said. like they, <laughs> like you know, they would like stand. Jesus stayed behind, and he would say, you know, somebody has so and so dollars, and other people have so and so dollars. It was kind of like with, an auction. But like what were they auction. selling? They were, Indulgences. I, don't know. I mean, they were just. I mean, you know. Were they selling like hymnals or books or? No, they were just holy you know, cards. <laughs> they just. I don't know what they. What I mean, it was, I just thought it was weird. It's it's as tacky as charging having a cash bar at a wedding reception. Yeah. <laughs> I once. I've been to a few weddings that had cash bars and what. What? Yeah. See, my, my when church, I when I go to a wedding, my I, church, want, I don't want my I don't want an empty glass. My my church will never do that. Yeah. But there's a cash some, bar at a wedding. Yeah. No. But there's no some empty, other yeah. yeah. But there's some other churches that do that. What the auction thing? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I I remember. My church that will never do that. That's good. You Stick know, with because, it. Because you know I love my church and yeah. you know and I love Jesus. Well, my church, so. my church, is a. <laughs> the synagogue, and they mm. and they they don't have a collection plate. They just mm. have pledges. Right. At the beginning of the year, yeah. you tell them how much money you're going to give them. Right. And right. The, and the crazy thing is is that um, mm -hmm. <laughs> the joke is uh, that more more than likely you don't you you have big ideas in January, but then when February comes, you know, not February uh, when well February maybe February, but certainly by this December of that year you. You said, "Oh, I didn't have such a great year. I don't think I'm going to reach that <laughs> that limit." So they said, "Why you going? I, I, I can't give you more money now, um, uh, more than I have, you know." But anyway, um, the uh, it's uh, so so. Uh, speaking of pledges, it reminds me of the joke that uh, I got arrested. This is during the Jerry Lewis telephone. I used to tell this joke all the time that I got arrested uh, trying to rob. I got arrested the day after Labor Day for trying to rob the Jerry Lewis telethon. Oh. And I almost and I almost and I <laughs> and I almost got away with stealing ten million dollars worth of pledges. <laughs> wow. 
crazy. The worst you criminal know, ever. <laughs> you know, people, people think they all about the money, but it's not all about the money. It's not all about the money. I know we need money to survive and all that, but good grief. People need to wake up. It's not really all about the money. It's, you yeah, know? it's not all. It's not, it, the best things in life are free. Yes. Uh, and the worst things, and the worst things in life you get for free with a prescription from, <laughs> from Sports Illustrated. <laughs> <laughs> that football phone. <laughs> there's something else that I want to tell you. It's, right. you know, you know, there's infomercial that we were talking about, you know, about, you know, pedophiles and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's one um, named Peter Pawpaw. Yeah. You've heard of him? I don't know any of these. All right. Well, PP? Peter Pawpaw. I don't like any. If, he's, if his initials are PP, I don't like that. I don't think a guy should be named after well, a bathroom. <laughs> going to the bathroom. Well, I mean, I heard that he was a crook. Well, Peter Papa. Well, the, the, all these guys are <laughs> they? They'd be selling aluminum siding if they weren't if they weren't preachers. <laughs> I mean, preachers on television. In fact, they they give preachers. I think they give the preachers. You know, most preachers. Like if you go to church, most preachers you go you meet are actually. Uh, I mean, they they have other jobs. They're they're bankers. They're teachers. They they have other things. Oh, yeah, they yeah, sell yeah. insurance. I mean, they're just typical people during the week. And then on the weekend, they 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 work in a church and they get paid a, a stipend, some a part of it. But they're but churches. Uh, but but then you see these guys on television that just make. Millions of dollars, right. <laughs> and they and so when when I meet a preacher, I say, "Do you make a lot of money like uh, like those guys on television, like Jim and Tammy uh -huh. Baker?" And so, no, no, <laughs> forget about those people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, uh, it's 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 quite the theater, the live theater, all the stuff that goes on, oh, all yeah. the singing, you know, yeah. all the you know. Um, I was at a uh, uh, I was at a funeral. It's the only thing I've religious thing I've done since <laughs> since the pandemic and it was actually in a church and it was a Catholic church oh. and it was and a friend of mine uh, told me I don't think I could ever be a Catholic I said why he goes well this it's very there's not a lot of singing going on or the singing is very staid it's uh you keep standing up sitting down standing up sitting down and and I said listen I said this is the way it's been for what uh almost uh, 2000 years or so mm. and i said i said the the catholic church does not does not change for you right <laughs> you it's like the marine corps you change for it <laughs> yeah exactly and the people are happy yeah um, in fact we are poised to have our second catholic president yeah if uh, if he comes through yeah. uh joe biden mm -hmm. we, we're still we're, they're still counting at, at yeah. uh, you know by the time you see this it may they may have decided but um but uh Oh, by the way, if, if Donald Trump w w squeaks out a victory this in this election, uh, he squeaked out a victory last time, um, uh, 2016, 2020. It looks like it looks like it, it, he's going to have it rough. He, I mean, he could if he gets right. the Supreme Court and if he gets uh, recounts and he gets to stop the proceedings right, and stop right, everything, right. then you know that he this. Then you know that. Yeah, he he sold his soul to the devil. <laughs> mm -hmm. There are some people you see. I mean, you always hear about these Faustian bargains people make. They said, "I wonder how they got to where they are." And then you start yeah. to think, like I always think, anyone who makes a comeback, like John Travolta mm -hmm. or Bruce Willis or mm -hmm. Frank Sinatra, right. I think I always say, "I wonder if they or Sylvester." Lund, I think I wonder if they sold their soul to the devil. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Because because it's 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 uh in in the realm of religion right. it's possible but I, you know I, I don't know if people can really do it but right. but you always hear in the stories and that people do it and I and Donald Trump looks like the type of guy probably have no problem doing it right I mean when, when, I, when he first got elected I mean you know I don't know mm -hmm. when he first got elected you know one couple years ago mm -hmm. um he he was a you know he had how he's a celebrity and all that. Yeah. You're fired. Yeah, like, I'm like to myself, why would a celebrity get in a presidential politics? Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, he hasn't really had any experience on, like, politics. And well, 
Uh, there's two reasons. I'm glad you mentioned that. One reason was they do it for the fame. They don't make money at it. He might be making money at it, but but for the most time they you know they've already made their money. They're all millionaires anyway. He's a billionaire, but they they do it because they hit the first. You get on the front page of the newspaper. You don't. It's not like you're way in the back. And um, and uh, in fact, running for president is a great thing. Yeah, Everyone, I mean, it always helps you, even if you lose, because if you run, then people will. Uh, See, you know, buy your book or uh, if you run and you lose, you still, you know, uh, that then it even a lot of these young guys like Pete Buttigieg and people like that, yeah. they're, they're not gonna win, Jesse Jackson, they're not gonna win, yeah. win in the day, but they're put themselves out there that you know, maybe they have interesting things to say, right. and then everyone then they appear right. on talk shows yeah. and everything, and that's and they, they do that for the fame, they know that, okay. that, that their future is ahead of them, yeah, 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 but I'm just saying, I was wondering why. Why a celebrity be the president? Yeah. Craziest thing um, is yeah. that celebrities tend to win. Oh. Like uh, well, Arnold Schwarzenegger famous. had nothing going for him yeah. politically when he ran, but yeah. everyone knew who he was. So people who right. didn't know the other guys well, running, they certainly knew who well, Arnold was. <laughs> well, they're famous anyway, so Sonny Bono, yeah, he was a, a congressman. He, he was, was the mayor of Palm Springs, Palm and then and then he became a gov uh, a congressman. Yeah. yeah, I think he was a congressman when he died. Uh, yeah. in a skiing accident. There was a, um, <laughs> there was a guy, uh, from Ohio. Oh. And he was a famous uh, TV actor, Joe Flynn, oh, and really? he was on uh, he was on um, McHale's Navy, oh. and I say he's from Ohio. He actually went back to Ohio. Sometime uh, after McHale's Navy was canceled wow. and ran for like city, like the um, uh, state legislature mm -hmm. of Ohio. Yeah. And they said, why? And then he and then he ran for something in California because that's where he was based in. And, his re and they said, why did you? Uh, uh, he, he was asked, why did you run? He goes, I needed to work. As an actor, no one was hiring me. <laughs> I knew I was going to get a few thousand and, and, and oh, I get yeah. and I'd get popular there. Yeah. Fred Grandy, the gopher from. Uh, from the love boat, oh, he became a congressman oh, for for many years, that. like ten years, that. ten years I think. Wow. After that, and uh, now he's back at acting. Sometimes I'll watch a like a, a sitcom oh, and I'll say, "That everybody. looks like Fred Grandy, the yeah. love boat." That was a great show. <laughs> Exciting and new. Do you know who sings that song? Cool. It's probably his biggest hit, even though he had a lot of hits in the day. Uh, Jack Jones. Oh, Jack Jones. Really good okay. singer. Really good singer. Yeah. His father was a was a very good musical, oh, uh, Alan okay. Jones, yeah, okay. who had a big hit called The Donkey Serenade, oh, and uh, yeah. which a lot of opera singers sing. Right. Uh, the, the Donkey Serenade, a lot of people sing. Um, uh, Mary Alonza and a lot of opera singers sing it. Uh, Nelson Eddy. Oh, yeah. But, um, uh, Vaughn Monroe, Vaughn Monroe. But there was a, a guy, um, uh, Alan Jones was in the original Showboat movie oh, with Paul yeah. Robeson okay. as, uh, Joe, I think, and yeah, you know, Old yeah. Man River. Right. And, but Alan Jones is, and Alan Jones, of course, is in two Marx Brothers films. He's in The Night at the Opera and The Day oh, at the Races. Wow. He was basically the re replacement for Zeppo. When Zeppo uh, kind of retired after Duck Soup. <laughs> Somebody asked me, we talk about movies a lot, and uh, it was it was it was on the internet, one of these internet things, and they asked, uh, "Is there any movie that if you watch the first five ten minutes of it, or if you come in the middle of it while you change the channel, you kind of stuck?" If you watch any of it, you kind of stuck watching it to the end because because oh, wow. you like it so much. Is there any movie like that for you? Um, there's a lot of movies I like to sit back. But I'm talking about like if you're just not if you want to watch something else that probably you should be watching, and then that comes on. <laughs> so uh, uh, I'll just watch a few minutes of it. I like the beginning. I like the opening song, or I like the <laughs> the scene, or something. And then and then you wind up watching it till it's over because it's such a good movie. <laughs> Name a couple. There's a movie, The Producers. Oh, I could, I could watch. Um, and the in-laws. There's huh? a Green Mile. You like Green Mile? Yeah. That's so depressing. It is kind of depre <laughs> it is depressing. But yeah. you will watch it till the end. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 
I saw it in a movie theater years ago. So. Yeah, it's, yeah, with that big guy, yeah, Michael yeah. Clark Duncan. Yeah, he yeah. was good. He was good at it though. That's the first time I ever saw. I felt really him. bad for him through the whole movie. Yeah, and then and then he died in real life. Exactly. He didn't live very long. Right. Big guy. Yeah. And uh, I remember, but uh, I said the producers and uh, the in-laws, the original one, yeah, one with Gene Wilder, oh, yeah. Zero Mustel, and they could yeah. also do the uh, second one, which is. Uh, Peter Falk and uh, oh, I like Alan Peter. Arkin. I love Peter. Oh, Falk. Oh, this is well. This is the best movie Columbo. you can see of it. Well, he's he's very good in this <laughs> one. And then I mean, it's such a funny uh -huh. movie. But then, uh, pretty much any Marx Brothers movie, if I'm tuning in the, if I change the channel, oh, horse feathers are on. Oh, animal crackers. <laughs> I usually even watch it. Or Night of the Opera. I'll watch it to the end. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of TV shows that are. Yeah, musicals like, are that way. Oh, I love musicals. Because uh, you could you could at least you know watch if not paying attention to you could actually be reading the paper while a musical was on that you've seen before and then they go oh here comes the part in the Wizard yeah, of Oz yeah. where they sing that song I like that too yeah right? <laughs> and you pay attention to that yeah, and then you put go back to your paper because yeah, you know the, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. the dialogue <laughs> yeah 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 I like a lot of TV shows yeah I, with TV shows though I tend to just want to watch them once. When I was a kid, I would watch them over and over again. Gilligan's yeah. Island and, yeah. and then Bewitched and shows like that. I used to like to watch The Sound of Music and Steel Magnolias over again. Yeah. Another sad movie. Yeah, it, is, it, is, it is sad, but it's it's a good movie. Though. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. it's very good. Yeah. All those women. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically a, like a, uh, a retread of The Women, which is a popular film oh. uh, made in the 1930s. Oh. Had an all female can now. Uh, Steel Magnolias have men, has men in it, but not a whole lot of men. <laughs> huh? oh. I mean, when you think of Steel Magnolias, you think a lot of women. Right. Dolly right. is in it. Yeah. Back to that was like the first movie I saw with uh, Julia Roberts in it. Oh, and yeah, I and, yeah. and what's Me weird too, is the, when you see Steel Magnolias, yeah. you don't really know. You know all the other actors, but you don't know Julia. And Julia yeah. was the one that became the most famous from. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now it's considered a Julia Roberts film because she had such an important movie, part. That was yeah. the first movie that I saw with her in it as yeah. well. But she did other movies way before Steel Magnolia. Mystic called, Pizza. Yeah, Mr. Pizza and some other ones yeah. that she did. But I never really seen those until Steel Magnolia. So. Yeah. And then I saw Pretty Woman. Oh, I yeah, saw I saw that night. one. I saw parts of that and one. And Pretty Woman, Pretty Woman was. Oh, as soon as I didn't know, I didn't really pay attention to who was who the woman was in right. it. And then once I saw her on screen, I said, "Oh, that's the, that's the, her. that's the girl." Well, I didn't say that's Julia. <laughs> now I would say that, but at the time I just said, "Oh, that's the girl from Steel at, from Steel Magnolias." <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, after the movie was over, I was, "Oh, that's a wonderful movie." Yeah, remember, um, what's that movie called? Oh, yeah. Well, that's really. Oh, good. That's People in the movie. That's a really good movie. Yeah, that, that's a real one in, um, in real life too. The woman, is, you still see her on talk shows. The the real woman, because she did a lot for the pollution in California. Yeah. I mean, she she was just like a secretary or like a, a researcher right. or this lawyer. Right. The lawyer did all the work. I mean, did all the made it all happen as far as making. Right. But he um uh he eventually I think ran for something in in California legislature. Um. That uh, with those fancy suits he was always wearing, yeah. Albert Finney played. Yeah. Oh, that's a really good movie. Aaron Aaron Brockovich is a very good. Movie. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. I saw it about twice in the movie theater this year. Yeah. When but, I used to work at the movie, when I used to work at the movie theater, I would see every single movie that was for <laughs> free. I would see it. I would. <laughs> ma I would see movies for free when I worked in the movie theater. Just because they were free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I can't really hate it if it's free. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, when it's, if it's over and I <laughs> don't like it, I said, well, I didn't pay for it, so. <laughs> you can always walk out if you yeah, want. Yeah, I can walk. Yeah, I don't think I've ever walked out of a movie. There was a couple movies that I walked. I walked out of TV shows. Yeah. I mean, if I, ah, I don't want to watch commercials. <laughs> but I, I, I was taped. I was going through old videotapes. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding. I'm gonna. You're gonna laugh when I tell you this. You know, you think of miniseries or, or these long shows like on Showtime or yeah, HBO or something, right, right. Netflix, where you where you have to watch everything. You have to watch all of Breaking Bad. You have to watch all of The the Walking right. Dead. You have to watch all of the, the, the Sopranos and all this stuff. So anyway, 
they had a German one that was actually shown in theaters by Rainier Werner Fassbinder called right. Berlin Alexander Plot, uh, and it was 16 hours long. Uh, and I didn't have the patience to go to a movie theater and, and see like what was it six? It was 16 hours. It was like four nights, four hours a night uh, to go to. Or, or I think how they did it wasn't like straight four days. It was right. like one week they played the first part, and then the second week, you know, people. And obviously, by the time the fourth one came, there's hardly anyone in the all, in the all made three or four people that really liked it. Yeah, yeah. So, but I never, I didn't even see the first one. Okay. So then, it was made for television, German television, yeah. and I'm I'm sure it's very good. But I taped the whole thing, and I'm not kidding. You, I watched the first hour of it. And I was just so I said I have to watch fifteen hours more of this all this German English di, uh, English subtitles <laughs> and, and this and this thing and I said I I, I I'm gonna put this but he made other films this guy uh, Marriage of Maria Braun a lot of good movies Despair and uh, and but they were you know two hours long <laughs> <laughs> I could sit through two hours of them and then with a beginning and an end a lot yeah. of these miniseries. They're, they're like the never-ending story. They never stop. Whoa. Twin Peaks is still going. There, there, there's no, the fact, there's no ending to these shows because even when they end them, they always leave it open for another, <laughs> for, for another twelve hours. <laughs> yeah, speaking of um, never-ending story, that was a good one. The, with the yeah, with the nowhere. Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the never-ending story. That's a German out, film. Yeah, it came out in 1985. Yeah, that was before I was born. Yeah, that was a good movie. <laughs> The sad scene that was there was one scene that was really really sad mm -hmm. when the whore when the guy the little boy was trying to like pull the horse yeah. from the swamp mm -hmm. and I hate it when the horse dies. Yeah, you know what's weird is you could have a uh -huh. hundred people die in a movie and no one cares if one horse dies, <laughs> one dog, old yeller, you know, or yeah. or, uh, or that Mar Marley and me or something. <laughs> yeah, that and even it doesn't even have to be a movie. It could be a song, old yeah. Shep. <laughs> by Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, uh, uh, me and Little Andy by Dolly. Yeah. I mean, people, you know, they actually, I saw on a talk show where Dolly said that the that it, when she was playing like Las Vegas casinos, she goes, mm -hmm. please, they actually, after she sang it like a couple of times during right. a, during a run in Las Vegas, like, like the third night, they said, please, please take that song out of, we don't want, we don't want to depress the people <laughs> 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 that are gambling their life savings away here. <laughs> They're depressed enough when they lose it. So, so yeah. sing, you know, sing, here we come again. Sing, sing nice songs. <laughs> sing nine to five. Get them back to work. <laughs> so you can make more money to bring to the casino and gamble more. <laughs> but me and little Andy. Oh, yeah, that's a really sad song. Yeah. And um, so, and uh, so, uh, and, um, you know, we actually were going to, uh, we shouldn't be doing the show today. You know why? We should be on our way to New York City. To the Thanksgiving Day parade, yes. probably in a few days, yes. but we're not going because oh, there's sad. no. Yeah. It's sad for everybody because there's no parade. Yeah. You, you, the Macy's parade, you remember? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I was a kid, I always wanted to go to it, and yeah, I almost, I almost had my chance this year. I mean, I actually was. Yeah, I almost had my chance. Yeah. Oh well, 2021. Yeah, we can I mean, still go. it'll happen again. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll do it. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah, t uh, the the floats and the balloons, underdog. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I w I'd rather be in a parade than just sit and stand and watch the parade. Yes. Yes, because. You yeah. ever been in a parade? I have a Christmas parade in Richmond here. The ago. Richmond Christmas parade. Yeah, I was at a dance team um, years ago. For yeah. your school? No, it's from my old church. From the church. Yeah, my old church. You know had a dance team and I was in it and I was on the float you know just dancing and clapping my hands right. that was so much fun but I, I wanted to do it again the year after that <laughs> but they didn't get me in this time so I'm like boo now, how old were you I was 27 at the time oh my, you know I got when you said this I got the idea you were like 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 five or six or <laughs> 27. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And what were you wearing on the float? I've never wearing, been on a float. I was wearing a just a plain Christmas turtleneck shirt, a red one. Everyone was wearing the same. It was like, like yeah, a uniform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I wore black pants too. A turtleneck and wow, well, you're like a real like a. I think I had you're a. like a beatnik. All you needed was a beret. Yeah. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> 
<laughs> Come to our church. <laughs> Merry Christmas, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Will you try our communion? <laughs> it's different from all the other communions. <laughs> that church, that particular church that mm. I went to then, yeah, was very was bad news. Oh yeah, but you got the parade out of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I did get the, <laughs> I did. The only thing I got out of it was some good dance experience, which yeah. I always wanted to do, to do for many years. Did you did you throw uh, like bread and wine at the audience instead of candy? <laughs> no, 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 no. We didn't. We didn't, we were just like. <laughs> did, you, did you bring did you bring loaves of fish to throw? At <laughs> Look, never never ends. <laughs> yeah. I uh, no I idea. let's see. I <laughs> I gotta tell you a funny story. My dad. I really. I always wanted to go to parades when I was like. I don't know why I like parades so much. <laughs> then we got. And then uh, they. My dad complained. How come you don't watch them on television? They're on television <laughs> every holiday, New Year's Day and, and, and Thanksgiving, yeah. and Christmas time. And he and I said, yeah, and they even parades. You know, in the summertime, Memorial Day and stuff. And and I said, uh, <laughs> we have a. Seven inch black and white TV set to watch these. Uh, <laughs> How am I going to get excited about a parade? Yeah. And I never liked, and I, I say this on a lot of shows, I, I, I never liked on parades the the fake banter on there. Oh, what's that coming up ahead? Oh, <laughs> it's the underdog balloon, you know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I always remember that uh, Matt Lauer, remember him, Matt Lauer yeah. and, uh, and um, Katie Couric. Yeah. We're doing the today in the Today Show the parade, and they were in contractual negotiations, and so they weren't being, they 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 didn't like having to do the parade, mm. so they made it clear to the um, to NBC, that, <laughs> they made it clear to NBC that we are not going, we will because all that stuff is written the 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 the, the that those yeah. that fake uh, laughter that yeah, fake yeah, stuff, yeah. and they they had it uh, they said we will read it, but we will read it with no emotion at all. Oh, that is that is the float. That is the float for the Bisquick uh, Bake Off from uh, Missouri. <laughs> and oh yeah, they make a lot of good biscuits there. It was really, I mean, they actually showed no enthusiasm. I mean, they purposely did that. They said we were we. This is our protest until you pay us. You know, uh, we we don't like making twenty million a year. We want to make you know forty million. I think they thought they were worth more money. <laughs> See, I can read that stuff, and now you can that, that, just just buy me just 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 right. buy me a nice dinner. Yeah. <laughs> See, I I rather be be in the parade, marching in the parade, than just yeah. sit and watch the parade. Because when I when I when I sit with the audience, I get bored. The parade is kind of boring because a lot of times they they halt the thing, so you're just looking at the same. And if you have a horse, yeah, that's why <laughs> a horse that doesn't know he's in a parade. Yeah. And never be behind a horse in a parade. Try to. <laughs> I just, I just like to just march around the parade. Yeah. Like, you know, I want to be active. I want to do something. You know. Yeah. I just don't want to sit around. You know you what ever, I mean? You ever been in the Chester parade, Christmas parade? I was in that parade twice. Yeah, I've been in there a lot. I try to be in there every year. They probably won't have it this year. Yeah. They, and then then sometimes snowstorms or cold snaps don't let you. Don't let it. I think rain. They may have it, but. You usually don't even have any uh, I know they canceled it for the past two years. Too. Yeah, I know. So, so I'm I, missing out. I'm yeah, it's better to be in the parade than exactly, that's why I'm saying. with the Shriners and the, the guys with the Fez. Yeah, <laughs> with the little teeny cars. <laughs> the little teeny cars, yeah. yeah. And um, mm. that, that, yeah, I like being in the, uh, I like being in a parade. In fact, the only, and every once in a while there'll be somebody, you know, I'll be in a costume. Right. I mean, you know, you're usually wearing something. Uh, mm -hmm. For children's theater, like right. uh, like I, I'm in my case, I'm usually wearing a top hat right, or something, right, or, right. or a crown, being the king, I Prince was, Charming, or something. And then what Eeyore happens is, oh, I'm sorry. I was Eeyore. 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 I've never been in a in an animal costume. Yeah. The only time, well, in, uh, in a play, I was yeah. I was Mr. Beaver. You were Mrs. Beaver in, yeah. uh, and that was actually believe it or not, that's a rather serious play. Nar uh, the, Narnia, the, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Yeah, but that's the only time I've ever mm -hmm. actually been animal like <laughs> usually i play all the all the because i'm a little older than a lot of the people in the in the cast i, yeah. I usually play kings and, <laughs> yeah. and presidents i always get to play the the the, the white collar parts yeah. <laughs> the parts with respect judges a lot yeah. 
Well, I need the beard and the very stir yeah. stentorian type of thing. So anyway, uh, so anyway, I'm I'm wearing a costume in the parade, a top hat or something, or a crown right. and a robe or something. Right. And there's always somebody who yells out, "Hey, Kevin!" <laughs> <laughs> and then I have to break character. Hey, hello, hello, Jimbo. <laughs> you old bag of dirt. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> I'm always afraid I'm gonna like insult one of the kids if I break character or something. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Peace. You do that. I, I usually like to. Uh, I usually greet all the children, and uh, and usually I greet the children that aren't smiling because usually the smiling kid, someone else has already cheered them up. I'm, I want to cheer up the one that's just <laughs> okay. Yeah. Usually the the that's middle the middle yeah. child in a group. <laughs> Maybe they're getting bored with the parade. Yeah. Just like I would have been bored just sitting there watching. You know, I I I've taken like I have like a lot a big family, so I've always, I've been kind of forced right. not forced but usually yeah. taking little kids to movies, yeah. you know, like Disney movies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Or movies I want to see, and you know I I'll make sure that they can see them. And um, and uh, and they're always into the food, the right. candy bars, the popcorn, the this drink. And I found out something weird about movies is that the more bored the kid is, the more they want to, they don't want anything to do with the movie and more to do with the food. They just want to eat. Yeah, just want to eat. While, well, while while I would imagine baseball probably sells more food than football or basketball because football and basketball, you know, keep it kind of the energy level up, but baseball yeah. doesn't. <laughs> So I'm sure that's why Peanuts and Cracker Jack is like, is like in Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Yeah. <laughs> Any football song that would be similar to that, you wouldn't, even, you know. Right. But all, all those, those, those songs would probably have, and, and get in the long line at halftime to use the bathroom. <laughs> 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 and then you have, to, and then it takes you so long that, <laughs> that by the time you get to. That the, and it takes you so long that by the time you get back to your seat, it's already the middle of the third quarter. <laughs> and you missed the, the two touchdowns by your favorite team. <laughs> wow. You know, you know, you got to wash your hair if this comes out. <laughs> if they say, well, I was true. Drew a picture. I once drew a picture of my sister, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of these caricatures, and yeah. I was like mad at her. So I wanted to show her how how filthy her hair was. <laughs> so I said, "How do you draw dirty hair in a picture?" Oh, no. So I drew a, <laughs> a mushroom growing out of her hair. <laughs> she said, "I want you to erase that mushroom," <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then, so then I drew it again, a different picture, like the next day. <laughs> I don't want any mushrooms in that picture. <laughs> so, so I drew a frog jumping out of there. <laughs> like it was a swamp. <laughs> we always, we always try to, you know, always yeah. try. <laughs> oh man, sometimes you see these, these like deranged kids. Right. Go to like any sort of nursery or any sort of like a kindergarten or something. Yeah. Go to the coloring books. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that have already been done, the pictures of them. Sometimes you just see kids with black crayons just, just scrape all over. And sometimes you see these really funny kids who put frowns on all the clowns. <laughs> and the, or cr frowns on all the dogs and cats in the, in the, in the coloring book. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. My, I have had a teacher. And um, I, I I didn't have a teacher. I I knew this teacher who taught that that uh, kindergarten stuff, and she said uh, I told her the same thing that I just told you, and and I said well how do you prevent that sort of thing? And she says well I go through the box of crayons, and I take out all the black crayons. <laughs> so if they scrape all over it, then oh this is my nice crimson, a nice a nice pink. <laughs> They can't do anything. I remember the white crayon was always kind of cool. Because you would, you know, when you had the color like black black people, African-American people in a coloring book, yeah, that was pretty easy. But it was very hard to do white people. What are you going to use? You're going to use, I actually got the idea to use orange. 
But then you get the pumpkin look. <laughs> you get the Donald Trump look. <laughs> that red, that orange tan. Yeah. And then and then you would use pink. And then you'd use uh, a white, which made no sense at all because clear <laughs> snow white face is kind of weird looking. <laughs> but we never, they've never figured out. Oh, and then oh, people, yeah. Yeah. people complained that all, there's no, any two people like us, are two, we don't have the same shade of skin color. There's always a different hue or variation of it. So one crayon is not going <laughs> to it's not going to do the job for yeah. both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They colored up. I remember I used to scribble all of them on the little books. Back yeah. In the day with the, like, yeah. Blank. Children's um, book, yeah. Yeah, I used to take crayons and scribble all over them. <laughs> and my mom would get so mad. Yeah. Because those were my special books. Yeah. She thought they were they were special. So. She was saving them for the collect for the for the collectors. Yeah. <laughs> for calling to sell them at a a a rare bookstore. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> but that doesn't work. Yeah. You know why? Why? Well, there's two reasons why. If everyone's collecting these Dr. Seuss books or these golden books or any of these books, uh, those little uh, the the little engine that could, or right, those little, the, right. the, the, the pokey little puppy, right? right. If everyone's saving I them, have that book. yeah. If everyone's saving these books, then they're not, then they're not valuable. What um, you need is a yeah. book that everyone threw out, and then uh, that, that that maybe children like you didn't scratch. <laughs> 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 but let's face it, a book that kids haven't written in or tore pages out of or anything is a book that was never read, right. which is actually sadder than. Like those dolls that they sell at Star Wars conventions that are, oh, look, yeah. it's like, a, it's 50 years old and still in the same right. container. And I always say, yeah, I mean, nobody opened it up to play with it, which I, is sad. Yeah. There's a character in, I think, Toy Story 2 oh. that is a prospector and he was still, he was a mint condition because, first off, no one ever bought him. And then the ones who did buy him never even opened the thing to play oh. with him. <laughs> I think it was Kelsey Grammer was the oh, yeah. was the voice of him. He was the villain of Toy Story two of, yeah. the, of the toys, yeah, which is was, sad because he nobody opened him played with him. No wonder he's the villain. Yeah, he was funny with Frasier too. Kelsey Grammer. Kelsey Grammer. Yeah, he's in a lot of uh, Broadway musicals in uh, New York since Frasier. Oh, he appears cool. on a TV show. He was in La Caja Fall, oh. and uh, he he was actually he was in a play. I don't know if you saw it, Finding Neverland. Oh, yeah. When we went to New York to see it, um, that was the show we saw, but Kelsey had left the cast at that point, and someone oh. else was. The guy who played him was fine, but, you oh. know, it wasn't Frazier. I didn't go see that, but yeah. I like to see it on Broadway. You know, the, you saw Anastasia, right? Yes, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, well, Anastasia, a really good play, a really good musical, and... Uh, I heard some of the audience that we were with, you know, didn't like it. Then they didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't, I, I don't like good. everything I see. I personally thought it was good. If you pay a hundred, let me tell you something. If you pay a hundred dollars for a ticket, a Broadway show, or even more than that, sometimes cost. Or if you pay a hundred dollars locally for a show, mm -hmm. thirty dollars, fifty dollars, right. it's a lot of money. And um, usually, when I pay that much for a show, I always like it. I I better like it. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, I I convince myself, hey, I'm spending a lot of money on this right. show. I, I mean, better like it. You pay for it, so you better like it. <laughs> I, I like the one that I like the most. Because I see it, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so every book I read, I ever read, I like because if I didn't like it, I would have quit after the third chapter. <laughs> <laughs> By getting to the end, I. I must have liked it. There was something that kept me going through it the right, whole way. Right, right. Now, stuff I watch on television, I don't read it. Though. I mean, I don't have to like it. Because yeah. it is just being thrown at you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anastasia uh, was a very good show. And, um, I mean, I thought it was a good show. And the people we were with said um, her boyfriend went to UVA. UVA! UVA, I'm wearing a UVA tie. And... Um, the uh, they don't show what really happened at the end of. I mean, I'm not giving anything away. At the, Anastasia is a, a story that uh, happened in the 1940s, where oh. where uh, a woman claimed to be uh, Anastasia Romanov, who they thought was killed uh, during the um, uh, Bolshevik Revolution, 
in uh, in Russia, like 1918. Oh. So what happened? 1917. So what happened was, and they killed everybody. And that this one woman to show up in Paris, I think it was Paris, uh, and claim to be person and have a lot of uh, memories and everything. Well, they did all this. All they they pretty much had all these experts, and they said that she wasn't her. Mm. And then that's how the every show ends with that. There's a TV movie. There's a movie with uh, with um, Ingrid Bergman, and of course the musical. The story goes on from there. Really? <laughs> she wound up in America. Mm. She wound up in um, Charlottesville, Virginia. Oh wow! She wound up mm. when I was in college living not too far from me and you used to see her around the wow. that same woman anna oh, wow. she, called, she her name was anna anderson oh. and when she died and she was a little woman when she died like in her 80s um uh they they got her dna oh, the, wow. they, the, at, at that time dna could prove once and for all if she was one of the romanovs mm -hmm. and the dna proved that she was not so oh. they were right in 1940s now yeah. a lot of conspiracy theorists Thought that uh, <laughs> thought thought that well she was going to be heir to all these diamonds and and jewels and riches yeah. and uh, in, in in foreign bank accounts all uh, over Europe yeah. and, and America and she, and they did not want her to collect all this stuff uh, especially a crazy woman so anyway this woman used to call in my radio show all the time wow. and ask and ask for it took me a while to find out that was her. Because she'd just say, do you have, and this is what she, she goes, I heard you play this last week on the, on your show. Do you, can you play the Warsaw Concerto, which is actually English. It's not uh, Eastern European. Yeah. It's from a movie. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so what happened was uh, somebody said, that's Anastasia Romanoff. And then I, I and then someone actually introduced me. This is Anna. I said, oh, how are you doing? Yeah. And then they told me that was Anastasia, the woman who claimed to be Anastasia Romanoff. So I always think that they should re redo the ending to the yeah. musical right. and have a scene at the end right. where she meets her favorite radio announcer, me, yeah. <laughs> in Charlottesville <laughs> in the 1980s. Oh and, 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 you know, they could cast me. I could play part. I could play myself as a as a 20 year old. <laughs> anyway, no, but uh, but if they can't get me, they can get either Arnold Schwarzenegger or Hugh Jackman to play me. <laughs> <laughs> Singing and dancing with the. <laughs> so what was Anna's last name again? Well, her her the name that she was known as was Anna Anderson, oh. but she she claimed to be the heir Anastasia Romanoff. Oh, okay. They they to show you what happened was they what they um they were trying to smuggle all the jewels out of right. uh, out of um out of uh, Russia, right. and they actually like gunned them all down. Right. The whole family, these are children and everything. Oh, not, wow. just, not just the, the nasty king and queen, mm -hmm. emperor, czar, and czarina. They actually, uh, uh, Nicholas and Alexander, um, they actually, uh, and the bullets bounced off mm. their corsets because they were smuggling all these jewels in yeah. them. They were trying to get out of the country. Yeah. So then uh, sadly they had to like use the bayonets on them. But, but, yeah. they, but they, they, the Russian army especially, the, Maybe today too, but uh, it was a rare, very bloodthirsty group, mm. and they right. they killed everybody. They yeah. didn't, they had no, you know, if you were a member of the royal family, and I don't want to bring everyone down, but they were. I mean, I, the kids, I, I think, were innocent. Not not the, the king and queen may have been jerks, but um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, but they should have that. You know, this woman came through it all, and this imposter came through it all. Wound up in Charlottesville, Virginia, and became. And became a, a big fan of uh, Kay Lazar on the radio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> played by Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> he played Peter Allen. He played me. He played the and he played the what? Logan the the Wolverine. <laughs> and uh, so um, so uh, uh, before we leave, um, have any thoughts on the election or anything? Uh, it's still going strong. Yes, it's um. You happy how it turned out? Or? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know. I mean, the best people. I hope the best people who won. Yeah. Well, I hope the people who I won. Just, I'm not necessarily yeah. the best people, but I hope the people who won do a good job. Right. Yeah, I just good. can't wait to see who wins. Oh, the presidency. Yes, right. yes. Virginia is already kind of. Uh, Virginia, you know, I love going to see politicians when they run for 
for president. Right. But I none of them came. What? None of them came to Virginia because Virginia is a solid now oh, wow. blue state. So I I missed yeah. them all. If you wanted to see him, you went to Pennsylvania or Florida yeah. <laughs> or Ohio. Yeah. So, because uh, I like going there I've, over the years, but so I never got. I've seen Trump and I've seen um, Biden uh, before they were president, but I or uh, before they ran for president. But I I haven't uh, seen um, Camilla, and I haven't seen Mike Pence. Oh, okay. So, so I guess I guess if they ever come to Virginia, I'll, I'll see them. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I like actually I don't with this pandemic I don't even want to see people anymore. Yeah. I, I want to see you yeah. and I want <laughs> and my friends and that's about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want to see my because I can't get pictures with them or I can't you know shake their hands or yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rub, rub their hands. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, <laughs> Mike Pence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mike Pence would probably, yeah, <laughs> if he saw me coming. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm sure he's fine. Um, good people on both sides. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to quote the president. <laughs> and there are. Um, not in that aspect, but in, well, be, these people run for office, you know. I want them to do a good job. Yeah. They are our, our servants. Always remember, they're, we're their boss. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So you have any final words for your 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 farewell address for today? <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you all for tuning in, and thank you for my special guest Kayla Zar. And may God bless you all. You take care. Thanks for watching today. Tune in maybe next week for more of our exciting adventures on the Mary Elizabeth Variety Hour.